remember a lot. If anybody's got anything, any, any places that I could have known anybody, did you know who you are? Please, find him, please. Hi there, our YouTube analytics says there's a 60% chance that you aren't subscribed. So hit the subscribe button and the little bell so you get notified when a new episode comes out. Do it now! I'm Scott Rouse, I'm a body language expert and analyst, and I train law enforcement in the military in interrogation and in body language. And I created the number one online body language course, Body Language Tactics, with Greg Hartley. Mark? I'm Mark Bowden. I'm an expert in human behavior and body language. I help people all over the world to stand out, win trust, gain credibility every time they communicate, including some of the leaders of the G7. Chase. Hey, I'm Chase Hughes. I did 20 years in the U.S. military, published two number one best-selling books on behavior profiling, influence, and persuasion. And today I give people, including intelligence agencies, superpowers in those things. Greg? Greg Hartley, I'm a former Army interrogator, interrogation instructor, resistance to interrogation instructor. I've written 10 books on body language and behavior. Put together this number one body language course at bodylanguagetactics.com with Scott Rouse. And I spend most of my time on Wall Street and corporate America. All right. Well, today we're going to talk about Calum Wisnett. And he's the guy that um, killed his son. And it came out a few days ago. And when it came out, we all, everybody sent us videos of it, all four of us. And we were like, oh my gosh, have you seen this? And we watched it really quick. And we're like, we don't have time to do a video. Let's go ahead and, and uh, say this guy should be locked up. It was so obvious. When you see this, if you haven't seen it yet, you'll see what we're talking about. So Greg, you want to give us a little background on this? Have you got some? Yes, yeah, so all I know, oddly enough, I have two degrees of separation with this guy. Somebody I know knows somebody he knows. And the first thing they thought when they heard this was it was him. That should tell you there's some baggage associated. And we can talk about a lot of that as we go through this. This is in Montgomery, Alabama. This was last week. As Scott said, we saw the video. We were immediately, all of us were immediately like, man, if we can just get this together, we should go and say, go after this guy. Um, I, all I can tell you other than that is they found the child not long after that buried somewhere in the in the woods and this is a, a five week old baby and i think the child died of head trauma we'll leave it at that yeah i think you sent me that first greg that's what it was i, I, I know that's i sent it I to you got it. i got it from lou i think was one of my twitter followers who sent it and said hey look at this okay and so then i sent right. it around and we started poking it. and all of us looked at it and said hey guys come yeah. on yeah you sent it first and i started getting a bunch of them like i think we all did all right well uh let's take a look at the first video we discovered that a missing child uh, had been reported uh, missing in the area. At this time, the Montgomery County Sheriff's Office would like to enlist the help of the general public uh, to come forward with any information that they may have. They can call us at our non-emergency number, 832-4980, or you can contact Secret Witness if you'd like to remain anonymous. What we're going to have now is we'll have the family come forward uh, to give a statement. All right, Greg, you want to go first? Sure. Watch this. The first thing is you'll see something very conspicuous in the sheriff's deputy or sheriff. He's got a grief muscle himself talking about this case. That makes me think, hmm, they may know something that we're not seeing. The other thing to pay attention to him is when he walks away and he brings the guy up, he cuts his eyes over to the other guy, if we watch the entire video, who's standing there like, hey, don't let this guy get too far because... I think they already know. And if you watch the entire video and you go find it, you'll see this other big sheriff standing there. And I, when I was watching it, my wife was with me and I said, yeah, he's looking to try to figure out what, what size leg shackle that guy wears because he knows he'll be behind bars shortly. It's that obvious, guys, as you're watching this. Now, when the woman comes up, there's a, a thing we talk about called fig leaf. And fig leaf is when a man puts his hands in front of his groin, and that's protecting primary sex organs. Women do the same thing by crossing their abdomen tightly with their arm. It's a barrier, but it's a very specific kind of barrier. It's a protective barrier. This guy's got so much control over this woman. And what you're going to watch as we move forward is something I call distraction. Chase, I, I love the quote you say, according to me. I'm going to say, according to me. I always talk about energy, direction, and focus as being really easy ways to figure out what's going on in someone's head. This guy's energy is high. Now, some of that's induced by chemicals used, I have a feeling, over and over and over, which have changed some nerve circuits in him. But the second one, so his energy is high, his focus is scattered, or sorry, his direction is scattered, meaning all arrows on aligning, they're going in all directions in his head. And then finally, his focus is internal. I call that distraction, high energy, scattered direction, and internal focus. He's also a nail biter. 
one of my favorite guys to get in an interrogation room because all that energy that causes people to bite their nerves is going to go somewhere when they feel something and you're going to start to see it. Mark, what do you got? Yeah, so do take a look at, it's actually Captain Trent uh, Beasley, uh, who's the, the gentleman right up front. Really watch him because he does an incredible job of putting even more pressure on during this situation. It's, it's almost an interrogation situation that's really going on here. He does a fantastic job. He's division head at that uh, particular establishment. Uh, now, right at the start, it seems like this couple kind of suddenly realize that they're meant to be in a state of sorrow. There's a moment of them kind of just out there doing nothing. And then it's like, oh, OK, we've got to do this whole sorrow thing. And so we see the female uh, covering uh, the, the elbow here, which I wouldn't expect if you've if you've lost a child. My expectation would be you want to have both of your limbs free. You want to be ready to, to do stuff. You're wanting to get action going in order to retrieve that child so you're going to be very out there i i would suggest rather than closed up and protecting these vulnerable areas on the body uh eyes are fully averted so a lot of eye blocking there and full aversion of the eyes seems interesting uh male controlling the the upper shoulder um and and the whole joint of the shoulder so there's a difference between when you take somebody's shoulder here and when you take it at the joint and you suppress at the joint it means you're going to have way more control over that person so there's a different be difference between comfort and what i would see is control going on there again interesting to see at this point uh and we've got really quite tense lips from him we can see drawn up here the musculature and therefore there's a tension here again uh, interesting to see I, I concur with you greg it's lovely to see the other uh, officer or detective over that side who in for my money is clearly making sure somebody doesn't do a runner at this point has clearly blocked off uh, an exit not only from a security point of view but maybe even from a psychological point of view as well to let them know that they're already boxed in uh, on every side there. Uh, Scott, what do you got on this one? So Freud said if his lips are silent, he chatters with his fingertips and betrayal oozes out of him at every pore. And the same goes for deception. Now, what I'm going to say is not only does deception ooze out of every pore, he's like a, remember the wacky water weasel? Did you ever have that when you were little? That thing it was it's just like looks like a cup. It's got these two goofy eyes on it, a little a little hair thing on it. You plug it into the hose and it like runs around, flies around, squirting water everywhere. And you try to run away from it, and not get wet, and dodge it, and all that. That's what we're seeing here. That's what his deception oozing out looks like. A wacky water weasel. Now, the first the interesting thing about this is that that all the things you point out, Mark, where, where they're supposed to be together, but her head is is stretched. Her neck is stretched. Her head is almost pushing him away. And you can see space between them both from from their hips all the way up to her hairline where she's trying to push not trying to push him back but she doesn't want to get any closer than she has to because this guy is an abuser and she's she as we go through this i'll point out the classic things that that we'll notice from someone being abused and being next to that person and why she's doing it this way uh more than anything she's hiding her face over and over probably because of shame and and at the same time she knows she's lying so she's trying to hide her face um yeah, and shoulder, like Mark, I'm just going to the stuff you, you did. Her short shoulder is a barrier, basically, trying to keep herself away from him. And you can also see her pelvis move slowly away from him and get as far away as she can get. So this, she knows what's happened. He knows what's happened. And she's trying to stay away from him. Chase, what do you got? Brilliant. I agree with all of you guys. Let's quickly walk through the Chase Hughes four-step checklist that we used in the last video when we we're talking about missing people. Number one, where is the concern directed? Is it story, plot, innocence, or the missing person's return and safety? Number two, are the moments of stress or fear associated with their guilt or associated with the missing person? Number three, is the information provided specific and directed toward finding the person. And number four, is the sadness more or less visible than the stress? So which one's higher, sadness or stress? So I just kind of made that quick reference. And if you're a reporter, 
also made a 20 point checklist on what you should be asking these people. And maybe we can throw it in the video description. So in this video, I think neither of them is looking at the media or the sheriff. They're kind of gazing down towards the ground. And this is common, extremely common in guilty cases. This is also a scene when an actor is about to go on stage. He's running through everything that needs to happen before he goes on stage. Mark can probably verify this. Uh, she's expressing shame while he rehearses his lines. So she's feeling some kind of a shame and he's just rehearsing. And the wife is mouth covering there at a non grief moment. And I think this is concealing more likely than it is sadness. Now, there's, so there's no uh, muscular movement of sadness or grief yet here. They haven't, they haven't started the show. And I think their reluctance to immediately come forward when the sheriff steps away uh, is indicative of their knowledge that there's no emergency, that there may not be an emergency that, that needs to be solved right away. So I think everything about this guy's presence uh, will set every woman who watches this will absolutely see it. But one thing to look at what, what Scott, you were talking about is that pelvic distance. So when people make contact with each other or partners make contact with each other, keep an eye out for the pelvic separation. So the upper part might be there, but the pelvis is, uh, start to separate. And this is indicative of all kinds of stuff, but it does, it does show that there's some disagreement in the relationship. It's not like some hard and fast indicator of abuse, but it's likely present where abuse is present. That's all I got. Excellent. I love that four step thing. Yep. Nice. What's yeah. the bet that uh, search on Google for wacky water weasel goes up? <laughs> I was just thinking. That's an indicator. <laughs> Guilty knowledge. Guilty uh, knowledge to the behavior panel. <laughs> that's true. We discovered that a missing child uh, had been reported uh, missing in the area. At this time, the Montgomery County Sheriff's Office would like to enlist the help of the general public uh, to come forward with any information that they may have. They can call us at our non emergency number, 832 4980 or you can contact Secret Witness if you'd like to remain anonymous. What we're gonna have now is we'll have the family come forward uh, to give a statement. All right, here we go. No, she's not good with cameras, so we apologize. But we would just like for anybody that has any information. I don't remember a lot. But I did remember I was breaking up, you know, with the cops. But I know that if, if, if anybody's got anything, any, any places that I could have gone, anybody, did you know who you are? Please, say, find him, please. It would mean a lot. It would mean everything to us. And that's... Family ain't the same without family. That's for sure. Is there anything else? All right, uh, Mark, what do you got? Uh, yeah, so let's just look at the linguistics uh, going on, because because for my money, they're enough. He kicks off with, I don't remember a lot. Well, that's that's handy. And I think, you know, maybe many of you will remember the episode we did uh, just the other week. And Chase was saying, I, I think it was that the other week, Chase was saying, hey, one of the one of the trickiest things you can do to an interrogator is like, I don't remember. Well, he's already started that process of going, it'll be quite a good alibi if I don't remember anything. And, you know, there's a good chance there's some drug abuse there uh, as well. And so may well, may well doesn't remember. OK, um, I do remember I was breaking up with the cops. Well, that just doesn't. I mean, you know, to, to one of Greg's points last week, sometimes culture and linguistics can come in. But even with culture and linguistics, I don't think that makes any sense. But let's 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 carry on. Um, uh, if anybody got anything, any places I could have gone. 
Okay. If anybody got anything, any places I could have gone, uh, anybody, you know who you are. Well, okay. That seems to point in one direction. That seems to point to him. Uh, any places I could have gone, anybody got any places I could have gone, you know who you are. Okay. It's either pointing at him or it's still very confusing. It would mean uh, a lot. It would mean everything to us. And then he continues with, um, family ain't the same without family. Well, let's just break this down. We've got a lot of eyes. It's a lot about I, and, uh, there's a lot of, about, you know, places I, I could have gone. So there's another I there. Uh, it would mean a lot to us. And, uh, so it's all about them and family, not about CJ. And it's not about what you might be able to do out there, what you might be able to do about helping CJ, helping that child right now. It's a lot about us and, and I, and family ain't the same without family. That for me is distancing. So a lot of, a lot of word salad there, which could be cultural, but I don't think it is. I think there might even be some kind of embedded confession. It's about I, the cops, us, and distancing around the idea of family rather than let's talk about the child and how you could help the child right now. I, I, I'll leave it at that because I, I, I could take up more, but there'll be, uh, there'll be less left for other people. Chase, what do you got? Yep, absolutely agree. We have another case of the missing perpetrator. We need a sound of it. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, And you know, as, as I'm always fond of saying, it's a great quote that I invented, uh, you know, the behavior panel wouldn't be the same without the behavior panel. <laughs> <laughs> so true, so true. Uh, so the, this entire monologue is story focused and it's not, not talking about CJ at all. The husband, I think, is a has some mental issues. I'm not a diagnostician nor qualified to make a diagnosis, but this certainly looks like a malignant narcissist uh, on a base level. And uh, the rest of this, the rest of these videos, his behavior is controlling and threatening, and while expressing zero sadness, there's zero concern for the return of the baby, and. His only stress behaviors are in response to potential threat of being found out or be, or slipping up in the story. There's no grief on the wife, uh, only fear. We do see fear. We don't see sadness and grief. Both of them are more focused on getting this over with. Just kind of let's wrap let's let's wrap this up. Uh, and I think the sheriff already knows that he's he's wanting him to keep talking. And that that phrase, like you said, Mark, places I could have gone. We know where it happened. So I think this is a a, a slip. Freudian or otherwise. Uh, Greg? Yeah, I don't think we're dealing with Einstein here, first off. So his word patterns are probably a, a result of poor education, maybe, you know, that kind of thing. It also could be a result of lots of chemicals over time and not clear patterns of thought. Um, the thing for me, I'm going to say this out loud. Somebody's going to feel sorry for this knucklehead in the comments um, and say he needs counseling. Yeah, well, wall-to-wall -wall counseling is what he needs. He needs some kind of for hurting this kid. Anyway, all relationships have weird body language. They're all microcultures, every one of them. But most relationships don't have the micro culture and the expression of fear. When a person holds another person by the shoulders, typically it's comforting. This woman's arm is across her torso and locked up tight. I agree. I don't see grief in either of these people talking about a baby who is missing. Now, Mark, I'll give you an alternative. What I think probably he's saying, he's saying, I remember we were breaking up and we were I think cops, he's editing as he speaks because he's cautious what he's going to say. And I don't think he's swift. I think he's just, or my dad would have said he ain't too swift. I think he's just rolling along and he's trying to tell a story and editing along the way. And he's probably saying, hey, him and his girlfriend, wife, whatever the relationship, I'm not sure. Maybe they were breaking up. I told the cops is kind of what I hear. Remember, I'm a deep South boy too. So I live in the world that's a little different. Then I also hear him saying, anybody who knows where I would have been, that sounds code to me, like I'm blasted out of my mind and driving around is what that sounds like code for me. So I think there's probably he's starting this whole story about how it happened. 
and he might not even remember how. Who knows? I'm, I don't know enough details of the case. But I would, I'm, I'm always cautious to try to read too much into language patterning in cultures that are this odd, because this is this is South Alabama, or they call it LA, Lower Alabama. This is Lower Alabama. And this is a poorly educated guy and also appears to have a drug issue and anger issues. At one point, if I were stroking my wife's hair to make her feel more comfortable, it wouldn't be with my knuckles, for example. There's all kinds of signaling of threat in this guy's body language. You can't miss it. And then she goes into something that Scott and I call transfer immediately. Doesn't mean she killed the kid, means she's hiding something. And that hide, when we prioritize our our feelings, grief takes back seat if there's an immediate threat often. We're going to get our bodies out of the place and we can deal with grief later. And she covers her face and she starts to be emotional and kind of rocking. And that's what we call transfer, emotionally unavailable so you can't talk to her. You guys already hit on the fact that her body is trying to separate from his and he grips and pulls her back in. Guys, if you see this in a service station, wonder if somebody's being trafficked. Look, something is not natural about a man physically grabbing a woman and moving her body around. And that's not comforting. I'll just leave it at that and say, every time I see this guy, and all the family isn't family, he's trying, to, he's trying to appear human and appear to be softer than he is, is what I see here. There are very few people that I see that I immediately think not a lot of value. This guy's one of them. This guy, I look at him and think, yeah, immediately, lock this guy up. We'll figure out for sure what happened. But he did something when I saw this. And yeah, is that is that a little bit of projection? Maybe. But there's enough stuff here to tell me that we'll figure out what he did. But this guy's done something. Scott, yeah. what do you got? I think, well, in this, throughout these videos, we're going to see behavior by her that says that that will show uh, I'm concerned, I'm not concerned, I'm, fe I'm afraid, I'm not afraid, those types of things. For example, now we know this guy is an abuser already from the record he has. Now, if you watch when she when he when he first says she's not good with cameras, she looks up and smiles at him. And you're going to think, wow, she knows she's in on this as well. Here's why I don't think she's in on this. When you deal with a narcissist, when you deal with an abuser, that person being abused wants to connect with that person because they, when they first met that person, they were connected to him. When they were dating, they were connecting. He was nice to her. He was love bombing her, in other words, firing off oxytocin, serotonin, and, getting, and that helps her bond with him. Now, what they do is they cut off that oxytocin and that serotonin, those those good reactions and thing, you know, those the, the positive reinforcement. And when they do that, that person is is in a way addicted to that oxytocin and that feeling they have from that that abuser or that narcissist and or the psychopath, whatever in whatever the case may be. So they'll do anything to make to get some of that, just to get a drop of it, to go like a, a heroin addict would do anything to get to get a hit of the drugs, man. But to get anything, they would they'll 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 try to get positive reinforcement from which gives them the oxytocin blast. That's what we're seeing here. We see that over and over and over. She can hardly lock eyes with this guy. Every time he looks at her, she looks away. And if he, when he's looking at her, he's looking over her head and she's looking at him. And then when he looks at her, she looks away. These are, these are classic signs of someone being abused. Um, and the, the hand that when she puts her hand to her face, uh, coming right out of the gate like that, that, that denotes, from my experience, shame and guilt, which lets me know, and I'm just saying me personally, that she's got guilty knowledge. She knows what's happened. We know she knows what's happened, but here's how we know she knew earlier, because she's showing us, because she doesn't know how to act. You're right, Greg, these people are, they're idiots. I mean, just, I don't care, I don't care what he says. They can't call me, yeah, they're both idiots. Um, so they don't know how to act. He thinks he knows how to act. He thinks he knows how to act like a person who's feeling sorrow and sadness, but we don't see anything, any, any expression of sadness. We don't see any heavy breathing. It's all actually light breathing. We don't see anything that lets us know he's stressed other than what, from, the, from the situation he's in, but no grief stress is what I'm, was what I'm trying to, to get to there. Um, uh, when she's covering her face, She's not. She's she's covering her face like this. You see the fingers going like this. She's pushing on pushing on her tear ducts because there are no. There are, she's not trying to push tears out, but there are no tears in there, and so what she's doing, she's pushing on those because she's thinking tears, tears, and there are none from either one of them. No grief muscle, no nothing. So 
When you watch her push on her face and you see her with her hands to her face, watch where her index fingers go, right to the insides of her eyes on her tear ducts there. Um, yeah, I could go on, but I'm... But, and, and if you're an interrogator, this is how you step in and go, hey, man, let's separate. We got to keep them separated. I don't think they've been talked to yet with this because look at the way they're acting. They don't have a story together. They haven't rehearsed it. They've said, okay, here's what happened. Okay, that's what happened, which is what usually happens when people do something. They'll say, here, okay, here's what happened. Here come the cops. You sit there real still in the car and the car cops come up and you all tell the same story because you've heard the driver telling the story. And so when it comes to the, the guy in the passenger seat or girl, he or she tells the story. The guys in the back seat tell the same story. But when you separate them, you haven't got that story clean yet. That's when you start finding out what the real, who's really being honest and who really isn't at that point. All right, that's, I'm going I'm to stop there. No, she's not good with cameras, so I apologize. But we were just like, for anybody that has any information, I don't remember a lot. But I did remember I was breaking up, you know, with the cops. But I know that if, if, if anybody's got anything, any, any places that I could have gone, anybody, did you know who you are? Please, say, find him, please. It would mean a lot. It would mean everything to us. And that's... Family ain't the same without family. That's for sure. Is there anything else? Any questions? Oh, we, we had we had pictures of the baby too, that, but we sent him to the investigator's phone so he would have him to show y'all in the press during the press. Uh, but yeah, if, I don't know if y'all can see this pictures, but this is the best I can do. He's only a month and a week old. There's other pictures with us together, but I didn't cro I, trying to crop him and do stuff with this phone is not working very well. But, yeah. but we sent him to the to the investigator. Hopefully, the press gets him. I, I pray that they do, so that so that they can have a good idea of what he looks like, how yeah. close we are to the family, and how much we'd really appreciate him if he was returned. Yeah. All right, Chase, what do you got? I think uh, his story is focused around helping the police. We were very helpful to the police. And uh, you can see him request approval from the press because he's looking for someone to start nodding their head. Somebody, please nod your head in the audience. Give me some, some kind of thing to relax. I don't think he sees that. And I think seeing the photo of the baby and seeing no approval from the press makes him start to hyperventilate. And you can see and hear him starting to hyperventilate. And I think towards the end when he starts trailing off, we have some fading facts there. But I think he's struggling with consciousness at this point where he feels like he may faint. And I think he's trying to it's one of those moments where you're like, OK, I'm going to stay awake. I'm going to I'm going to keep myself up. And he's trying to keep himself from fainting at the end. And. He was dismissive about the photo about, oh, this is it's not going to help anybody. It's not going to it's not going to do much. And he's not willing to send it to the press. He's like, oh, yeah, maybe maybe the police will send that to you guys. I, he's not wanting to send it out. And it, definitely there's managing stress. There's no managing sadness here. There's managing stress. And I'm, I'm glad that you. And the other panelists sent this video to us. If you see anything like this that's breaking news, please get this to us as fast as possible in the future, and we'll get a chance to take a look at it. Uh, Scott? All right. Um, when she says, this is the best I can do, or, uh, this, this whole thing, I'm, I'm looking, I've got tons of notes, as I'm sure you guys do. Let's let's go. Let's skip that part and go to where he says, uh, we've been trying to crop him. She looks at him and smiles again. 
Once again, she looks at him and smiles. It's really quick, but take a look at her when he rolls back around. Again, she's trying to get that, that oxytocin thing happening, and she's afraid of him. Every time she looks at him, she knows she better be smiling. Because up to this point, this is as nice as he's been to her since they were dating. I can promise you that. He hadn't been nice to her at all. And you can tell by the way she's fearful, the way she's standing, the way she's trying to separate herself from him. Um, back to my wacky water weasel theory. Um, as, he's, as he's talking, and he tries to connect with, with Captain Beasley. He gets in there and he's like, and he's look at him doing this, and, and that guy totally blows him off. That's, that's, that's hardcore. Just totally looks away because he knows this guy did it. And he's not going to connect with him. And he's just leaving him there to fry right there in the sun in front of everybody. Doesn't do it. Doesn't acknowledge him. Doesn't do anything. Oh, my gosh. That's, that's beautiful. And in our thing, that in our course, the True Crime Workshop, we have something called, we have different um, people act different ways when we've named them. For example, this one is Romancer. Again, like Greg was talking about earlier. He's just, he's trying to be helpful. He's trying to look and we've done all this stuff. We try to bring pictures. We try to crop them. We've done all these things. And the romancer gets right up in your face and they're like, yeah, they want to help you. They want to get out and look for the person who's, who's missing. They want to do whatever it is you need them to do so they can stay in touch with what's happening. And this guy is just burning you with wanting to help too much and be too, he's trying to set the tone that he's a good guy and then he has a family and everything's great. And it's just just not working because he's he, at some parts where he's trying to be quiet. He's just talking gibberish. I mean, there's nothing really coming out. He's just talking. And it just sounds that's talk about leaking. That guy's squirting everywhere. Um, like OK, that's, I, I, Greg, what do you got? <laughs> yeah, he's squirting like a water weasel. Yeah. So you talked about the woman looking at him and smiling. Primates yeah. are cousins, chimps. That is a primal thing they do out of fear. Heh, they show their teeth out of fear. We think of it as something else, but I think that's that kind of smile when she's looking at him, trying to connect and looking back. Um, he does a little distaste thing at one point where he does a tongue jut. All of this is his prepared, look at what I can do. He's giving you everything that he's put together. Hey, we did this and we did that and we did this and we did that. Well, it's your kid. Of course you should have. Still no grief muscle. The sheriff had that grief muscle in the beginning. He doesn't have it yet. Um, he does something, I think it was you, Scott, who brought up that people who use drugs have two faces, or we talked about it collectively, where they've got one for the, for the police and then one for their dealer, the people they're dealing with. Well, this guy's trying to put on his best face, and it, it, it ain't a good one, but he's trying to do his best to come across as believable and trustworthy and all of those things. And his distraction is showing again. Remember I said distraction is high energy, um, misaligned arrows, arrows going in all directions, and focus is internal. Well, his reason for being distracted is standing right beside him. What if she says the wrong thing? And that's what I think it's all boiled down to at this point. And so we see a lot of this stuff coming up and boiling. And his brain is trying to prioritize the right thing to say. And that's when he starts to come out at the end with just gibberish words. I often say that when people are editing to deliver a message, we've all interrogated prisoners, and when they're telling you something that they prepared, when they get to the end, there's still other stuff left, what you would call word salad, Mark. I call that, it's kind of like if you're typing in a document and you're constantly editing and you don't take all the crap you leave at the end out, that just rolls off their tongue. And it does it more based on people who have less self-control and those kinds of things. So the more of that I hear, the less self-control I think the person has. That's what I see, and that's where we're at. Uh, Mark, I think it's you, right? Yeah, lovely. Uh, so, you know, all credit to Captain Beasley there, who is doing a masterful job of doing absolutely nothing and letting them just boil there. It reminds me, it just came to mind here. I, I, we used to have this little game uh, live on, on live theatre stages. What would happen eventually is, is somebody's in front of you, you know, doing dialogue with you in front of a large audience and they just dry, which means they forget their words. They don't, they've gone. The words have gone. And sometimes you'd help them out. Sometimes you would, you know, deliver them the line or do their line for them or, or ask them a question which would trigger them. And some days, you know, when you're eight months into a run in the West End, sometimes you just think, no. Nah. I'm just going to let you fry. <laughs> and you just look at them and smile and you might say, you're on your own. And what would come out 
because they now have to get themselves out of this. And because of the adrenaline or the boredom or whatever it is, they have no idea what they would make something up and it would be a gem, especially if it was Shakespeare, because they'd have to make up a whole bunch of stuff. They just, and that's what's happening here. I think that's what Captain Beasley knows, is that if he stands there and basically goes, I'm not helping you out, you're on your own here, that they will start to talk. And, and I agree. Uh, what comes out for me, there's a little bit of I, I, I pray they do. So there's a little bit of bringing God uh, into it, which is always, a, you know, often a sign of, of something may well be up. But he talks about the technical issues around delivering a photograph and kind of the supply chain problems of that. Like, I hope it goes to the right person and that comes to this. You know, I've got a, we've got a lot of worries about the whole technical issues behind the photographs and the whole supply chain we just really haven't sorted that out well you know that's he shouldn't be in that situation he should be like here's here's a photograph you know that's going to work for you you would want them to see a picture you wouldn't want to be talking about your supply chain problems and then by the oh by the way i completely agree uh, greg uh, it's it's appeasement smiles throughout from the female here and 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 you know watching this now you want to be sure that you understand all the different smiles out there you know there are many many different types of smile and sometimes people smile because of pleasure and sometimes they smile because of fear and sometimes appeasement to get on the right side of somebody i think there's an element here of 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 appeasement and we'll see that in a moment again anyway the last one there that i want to point out is is the kind of fading facts or gibberish that happens at the end there which for me triggered in me remembering some of the jazz musicians that I've heard play and when they introduce a song and they'll come up close to the mic and go, so so this one is jazz. And, and there's a home, home from a bunch of stuff like, what are you, what's the name of the song? What's it, what's it, what's it called? Anyway, just remind, you know, and only make light of this because you've got to, because it is so clear that there is something up here and a five five week old child involved in this you know sometimes i don't know what else to do but look for the lightness and the fun uh around this because you know there's no bringing that kid back uh again it's extraordinary there there's there's my bit on that any questions oh, we, we had we had pictures of the baby too that, but we sent them to the investigators phone so he would Having to show y'all in the press, doing the press. Uh, but, yeah. If, I don't know if y'all can see this pictures, but. This is the best I can do. He's only a month and a week old. And there's other pictures with us together, but. I didn't. Cro okay. Trying to crop him and do stuff with this phone is not working very well. But, yeah. but we sent him to the to the investigator. Hopefully the press gets him. I pray that they do. So that, so that they can have a good idea of what he looks like. How yeah. close we are to the family. And how much we'd really appreciate him if he was returned. Yeah. Um, can you tell us what the last thing you guys remember about the last time you all were together? Saturday? Yeah, Saturday was the last time we were together. Saturday, Saturday night. Saturday night. Yeah. We were all together sleeping, and well, the baby with me and her in the bed, and Toulouse was in the other room. Because we usually, you know, we usually are together as a family, but. It's not easy. I don't, and I don't remember much of <laughs> All right, uh, Mark, what do you got? Yeah, lovely. Uh, so first thing that uh, triggers a red flag for me is you can see how well her hair is tied back. Would you ever think that any of her hair would get in her face? It's not going to because it's super tied back. And we see some grooming there. It's not necessary. It wouldn't be necessary to do that. 
There wouldn't be hair in her eyes. So that's a sublimation of something else. That's a, a, a distraction or a comfort gesture or something that something is going on here. Yeah. Um, uh, when, when were you last together? Saturday, upward inflection, and she looks up to him. Uh, she's asking for approval on this. They're now looking, number one, maybe to get their story together. That's possible. Or somewhat the story has been got together and she's going, hey, am I, am I getting this one right? Do you approve of how I'm performing here? Could be an element of that there. Um, then she puts herself into the victim there. It's, it's, it's not easy. Oh, very muddy timelines, by the way. Just muddy, muddy timelines that already don't make a great deal of sense puts herself in the victim state there it's not easy and then he goes and i don't remember much of so we're back into the not remembering piece there which is either a tactic or he sincerely has no idea what was going on there that's a possibility as well i just want to give you um one little model or a series of models to think about how they're behaving and how they're performing right now. Uh, you can think about things in terms of, um, I think it's Joe Navarro's idea there of comfort or discomfort. That's a good way to just have a simple way of going, do they look comfortable or do they look uncomfortable right now? I often think about things like warm or cold. Do they look like they're warm and open? or do they look like they're cold or closed? I've maybe told you about these before, but I wanna give you one more of these, which is, are they being direct or indirect? And so direct movement is very, very clear. It seems to go where you think it should go immediately and it gets there relatively quick. And when it's there, it really feels like it's landed. Both of these two, especially the male, are super indirect at the moment it's it is it is a scots you know got his 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 uh his model there of the uh, wild water weasel whatever it is <laughs> those things are interesting wacky. to watch wacky wacky water weasel those are interesting to watch because they're unpredictable and you don't know where they're going to go they're very indirect okay so that's what i'm looking at here is going so this body language is very indirect in a place where i would imagine you'd want to be very direct because time is of the the essence time is ticking away here for your child you'd want to be direct so again red flag goes up for me why are they being indirect when i think they should be being direct greg what do you got on this so one thing you will notice they have not yet mentioned this baby's name once, once. period not once not once does anybody know the baby's name? Well, he's called CJ. CJ because it's Caleb Jr. And try to remember that baby's name because nobody will. But they are so internally focused, internally focused, that they're trying to get their message out without paying any attention to what these other people are doing. They're keenly unaware that people perceive them the way they do because that you can see they're actually a little amused that they got their story out, that it was Saturday. And she looks up for approval, agreed. Oh, yeah, it was Saturday. Now she's looking to this guy for approval and requesting approval for him. And if that's your strong point, that left shoulder's whipping because it's uncertainty when he's answering every one of those. You can't miss that single shoulder shrug constantly. Now, it could be a behavior trait that he has because he's done it so many times. But likely in this case, he's uncertain of what he's saying. I'm not going to beat this one to death. I'm just going to say there's a lot of them trying to collaborate and corroborate each other's story face to face and they are so internally focused they're not aware even that those officers are standing there going yep okay this is good this is shooting fish in a barrel or that even the people who are interviewing them are focused people in volatile relationships often don't notice people outside them i'll just leave it at that and chase what do you got yeah i absolutely agree with you guys and he's clean shaven looks well rested has a very recent haircut and she's repeating his words, sometimes verbatim and looking up at him with a trepidation. I don't use many three syllable words, but maybe Mark can make sure that's the right one. Good one, Silver. And I think hypothetically, if there was a scenario where a narcissist husband did something to their to his baby, that would probably lead to a conversation of 
we can't fix it now. It's already done. Uh, you can either ruin my life, your life, and the kid's life for the rest of our lives, or you can get on board. The only way that we're going to fix this, look at me, look at me. The only way that we're going to fix this is to get this story straight and we're going to go to the police. That's the only way I'm going to be here for the kids. Everything's ruined for you, for the kids, for everybody. If any of this goes to police, all we're going to do is screw up our life. And that's that's I, hypothetically uh, what I think might happen in a, in a scenario like this, which is uh, pretty bad. Scott. Yeah, I'm glad you picked me next because you're right, man. You're exactly, that's exactly, I'll bet you, I didn't think about it that way, but when you say it, it's like, yeah, you're right, that's exactly, you know, look at me, so you don't go to prison too, because we're all going, because we've waited this long, but she can't help it, because she's afraid of him, so no wonder she's not going to say anything, you know, when he says, when they say, when's the last time you were together, they both pause and think about it, Greg, if, 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 uh, you, if somebody, if you said that to somebody and they, and you were like, well, when's the last time you saw him? What are you going to do? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm yeah. Gonna go, so, uh, 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 yeah, I'm yeah. not going to say a damn thing is what I'm going to do. If you're asking exactly. me if somebody else is in the room, I'm going to get deadly quiet. Exactly. I'm not exactly. going to, that's why I'm saying they're not smart enough to realize people are watching. No. No. And when little kid, and when you, if your little kid is missing, you're going to know exactly what time it was. She was 7.30 and here's where I was. I did this and all of a sudden he's gone. I think that guy took him. Somebody must have, there's nobody, somebody must have taken him. There's no out as to what they think has happened to him. Chase's point earlier on, there's no emergency here. There's a, this is, this is ridiculous. And that makes me think, it's, because it wasn't long after this where he was, where they, where he it, um, admitted to what he'd done. Right. So or they, they, I would they think, found the body at first year, I think. Yeah. yeah. Oh, is that what happened? Yeah. Okay. Well, I, I don't, don't know, know how the how the thing unfolded, but yeah. All right, because I would think, I think that Captain Beasley would take him in, take him in a room and say, "You set your down right now." Now, what do you think's going on? And doing that whole thing, not being nice, not being hey, let's talk about what's say none of that. You go the damn jugular right there. So in this in this case, well, I'm going off on a tangent. Um, they know ex he says nothing when that when when they ask that and notice it's a woman asking it you know and, and ev the first few questions are all women i'm sure they're dying to to, to be talking to these people because they see it on them and and when he, he said where were you all last together he doesn't say anything he says nothing because he knows when they're last together and then she says saturday night and then he says what part does he say where she looks back up like well that wasn't right there's a part where she looks up and says that Anyway, she's fidgeting around. She's so uncomfortable. She can't hardly stand it. And um, again, she's putting putting uh, distance between them both. Oh, when he says the 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 ba when he says the baby, me and her in bed. That's what he says. She looks. That's when she looks up and is like, "What? That's not right." Uh, I think he. I think he did that. The the he was out and the baby was out in the same room he was. And I think whatever he did, he did that and then took the baby out. That's what I think happened. Um, and and while she's while this is going on, she starts texting. Who she's on TV? Who's she texting while she's on TV? She's using her phone to hide. She's hiding away from from. She's insulating herself, Greg. She's it's an insulator where she's she's getting in there and she's in the middle of something. So she's she's trying to blank, I guess, blank all this stuff out because she knows that this isn't going well at all. Not at all, because she's looked at that Captain Beasley a couple of times, too. And that cat's not having any part of it at all, not even a little bit. All right, who's next? Mark? I think we're I think done, done now. Oh, yeah. Okay, good. Guys, I Actually, don't think... Chase, I just want to pick up on... I, I didn't know... I didn't pick up on the on the, on the the shaving and the, and the haircut. Uh, so I was interested in that, because what I did notice was a crease down the side of the... Of yeah, the T-shirt, it's a, a freshly shirt. ironed T-shirt, or straight out the bag. It was and folded. It's, like, it's it was folded, it's, Mark. Yeah. You can see the fold yeah. marks right yeah. down. Yeah, there. yeah, but it's but it's for, yeah. So it's like it's like it's like box fresh, That's and, his church and shirt. that yeah, and that for me is like ah, oh, guy, you, you managed to get a box fresh shirt out for this. That's kind of I'd have just grabbed. I'd be in. <laughs> I'd be what you know. I don't know what I'd be in. I'd probably be I naked. Know I wouldn't grab sure any clothes. If, I don't know for sure if this is a married couple or a baby mama kind of thing. I don't know because she talks about her two-year-old, not their two-year-old, her two-year-old. Yeah. 
Yeah. yeah. So I don't know. This is there's some volatility here for sure. But I don't think he's clean shaven. I think he's got he's got a little beard on there, Chase. It looks like yeah, two he, days. Yeah. He, but he's shaved over here. I think okay. he deliberately not shaved in the in the mouth area. Okay. All gotcha. Right. Saturday? Yeah, Saturday was the last time we were together. Saturday, Saturday night. Saturday night. Yeah. yeah. We were all together sleeping, and well, the baby with me and her in the bed, and Toulouse in the other room. Because we usually, you know, we usually are together as a family, but. Not easy. I don't, and I don't remember much. Of... All right. Here we go. Yeah. When did you all realize that you were missing? Uh, I, they, they didn't. I was home with my oldest, my two-year-old, and he was with, CJ was with him. And uh, he went to go pay gas at the gas station and realized that he was gone. And he let the police know and me know that he was missing. Wow. Wow. Gosh. Okay, Greg, what do you got? I'm not going to have a whole lot for this. It's more of the mm -hmm. same. It's There's some posturing and storytelling, and she says... I, I was here and he was with and he said, I didn't tell him there's some talking. I can't figure out exactly what he's talking about there. He kind of trails off. I think it's more of a signal of, hey, hey, careful what you say. He's got a hand on her again, regardless of whether she was involved. She certainly knows what happened. And he's trying. I agree with you, Chase. This is a you better listen to me or you're going to jail for the rest of your life. And she's listening and she doesn't seem like she's altogether there either. I mean, the way she's responding, I'm going to leave this one at that. That's about as much as I can take of it. And uh, Scott, what do you got? All right. Um, I think I think he gave her the cue. That was her that was her part to talk because he didn't want to say anything at that point because he knows all this stuff. She pretty much knows, too. But that was her cue, I think. I, th I think he was cueing her in to talk. And that's why he looks right at her and he's doing all that weird dancing around wacky water weasel stuff. Um, then... Um, yeah. When when then when when she says when did you all realize he was missing? They haven't thought that they haven't. Like I said before, they were in the car, whatever. Said okay, here's what happened. Blah blah blah. Here's our quick story, and didn't get the details. And so when they when that woman asks the reporter asks that question, where when did you realize he was missing? She has to lie about it, obviously, because she's got to come up with the time. And we all know, because I've talked about it a thousand times, when you lie, the brain has to do three things. First thing, first thing it's got to do is stop you from telling the truth. Hang on just a second. Make something up and then deliver it. And in the delivery is where you see most of the action in this. You see a lot of it when they're thinking it up. But the big stuff comes on, the hardcore stuff comes on in, in delivery. And that's all we're seeing in there. That's a, they're actually putting themselves in the liar's loop. They're sticking, they're getting ready to go down the, the uh, Greg and I have a thing in that, in uh, the true crime workshop where uh, how you tear a lie apart and you can box somebody in fairly quickly if you use this loop. And they're putting themselves, without going into details of all that, they're putting themselves in this loop, uh, in, in the death spiral of a lie, almost right out of the gate with this. It's, I don't, I don't, I'm not, I don't have much else to say about that either. Chase, what do you got? Uh, she's all, all shame, very little sadness, and she's being abused at home. I would, I would stake my career on that, but, uh, this downward gaze that he's got with this bouncing movement is most likely an expenditure behavior. So he's just burning off excess energy. So he sees his biggest problem as I need to manage this stress, not display sadness, so he's seeing stress management as a bigger problem than displaying sadness. So that's taking over uh, his his physiology and and his CPU, his his brain uh, at that moment. And I think her fear of him is absolutely palpable uh, in in this clip right here. 
And this, this gaze that he has downward is just planning, strategizing, and ensuring that she stays on story. And I think this is, you know, this is where we're starting to see that she heard that speech. She heard that speech of, we can't fix this. We can't go back in time. We're all going to go to jail. You're going to screw my life over. You don't want to be responsible for that, do you? That kind of, that kind of mm. stuff is, is, is hardcore. And I think she's trapped in several different ways in this video here. And uh, Scott, please show us a still on when this goes up. I want you to see this uh, on the very final frame of the video. And this glance that he has says a thousand words. This is disdain and careful observation of her is a horrible human being. So if you ever see something like this for your friends, ask him if they're okay when they're in private. Take a look at this up. And sometimes all it takes is someone just to notice that and then ask the question because a lot of people, you'd be very surprised, get into a, a relationship like that and feel like it's normal. And they feel like it's normal until somebody starts to ask questions about it and they begin to understand this isn't, this is not how everybody else lives. That's all I got there. Uh, Greg. I think it's Mark. I'll be, I'll be Greg. Uh, yeah. Good, good points there. Uh, good points there, Chase. Um, so it starts for me with, with an eye block uh, right from moment one. And, and even that's, Odd. In fact, the whole idea right from the start of of she's not good with cameras, but you know, you know, if you've got if you've got kids, you know that they pull a whole resource out of you that you didn't even realize you had. You know, if you thought you were busy before, like when you got kids, it's like, wow, I can get I can get a lot done. I'm getting done everything that I did and all of this at the same time. You know, this is what busy really is. That so they pull a whole resource out of you. And so when your kids are in trouble, like it pulls another big resource out of you. You've got a lot of power to get stuff done. Do you think you're camera shy at that point? point do you think anybody's like I, mm, i'm not sure i can really face the cameras right now no you you you'd be there you'd be fronting it up you would be getting eye contact with all those people out there your inhibition would be gone because there's only one thing on your mind which is i'm gonna get my child back i want to save my child so i don't get the eye block right from moment one Yes, he's um, he's he he deflects right at the start. I he says, uh, you know, when did you know they'd gone? I, well, they didn't. Well, that's a great deflection, isn't it? We're not going to talk about when we realise they're gone. We talk. We're going to talk about when they didn't realise at all. So it's a complete deflection to the negative over to somebody else. Uh, very interesting move. Lots of dominating. Um, moves there, including a control of, of, first of all, the neck and then controlling the head. So we've moved from domination of the shoulder to now getting control of the neck and, and the head. And you'll know, you know, if you, if you grab somebody around the neck, they've still got a lot of power from their shoulders. If you can take control of their head, they've got a lot of trouble right now because that's the thing working most everything else. So wherever the head's going, you're going to be able to lead them. Same as the center of gravity. If you take control of the center of gravity around the stomach area or take control of the head, there's not a lot they can do. So highly dominant uh, behavior there. What I really um, what I really enjoy about this is then his look to um, to. Uh, Captain Beasley and then Captain Beasley's friend who's off off camera there of like, can we can we end this now? And no, we're not going to end it. <laughs> not going to end it. We're just like, no, we're not going to help you out. You're going to oh, keep man. on going. We're going to see where this one goes. You're going to have to walk away from this. We're just going to let you keep on running and we're going to see where this goes to. I'm almost sure this is a definite tactic from them because I have seen police with with other 
victims in this case. And with a victim, they are often very, very careful to take them away, to comfort them, to make sure, because, because that victim may well have information, they're an asset at, at this point, and keeping them comfortable and safe is a great asset. These two are not trying to keep them comfortable and safe right now, quite, quite rightly, I think. Um, yeah, that's what I got. Hey, I, I, let me add back one thing. One thing that I noticed in her, and Chase, I think you hit it dead on the head about him. What he is doing is all that nail biting energy is coming out. He, he's not biting his nails, but look at his fingers are chewed down to the nub. It's coming out. You can't hide that. That's the reason it's easy to interrogate somebody who does that because they bleed. But in her case, she does something very interesting is that when you play with your brow, that's not associated with grief, that's associated with stress. And that drives the whole point, everything everybody is saying, that she's stressed because there's the number one threat right there next to her. And she's probably smart enough to realize that he might be a threat, but that's also a threat standing right there. And that threat or that danger is going to override her grief in this case, whether she has grief or not, not sure. But look at that playing with the muscle in her forehead. Every one of you has done it instinctively, put your fingers to there. Because those two lines that are going up are not grief. Those are concern or other negative mm -hmm. kinds of things. But look at it and pay attention. It's, there's no arch. It's just she, she's playing with her forehead. And it's also eye blocking. Yeah. Also, I think that I think she is becoming his adapter. As he's squeezing on her and like you would like those little, you know, stress balls or something. He's doing that <laughs> stuff to her. She, she's how he's getting his, his uh, stress out is on her, which is I'm sure he does in life because he's an abuser. So that's one That's one, one that stood out to me. He's got his hand around her neck and those types of things. We'll see him get even tighter here in a few minutes. I think he's using her as, an, as his adapter, you know, or his adapters are, or he's releasing that energy on her. Just, yay, yeah. Yep. When did you all realize that you were missing? Uh, I, they, they didn't. I was home with my oldest, my two-year-old, and he was with, CJ was with him, and uh, he went to go pay gas at the gas station and realized that he was gone. And he let the police know and me know that he was missing. We did know. If we know, he would have already went there. How's the rest of the family holding up? I know this is a tough it's, ordeal, but it's been taking a toll on everybody. Everybody's saying prayers. Everybody's keeping an eye out for him. Um, all right, Chase, what do you got? First thing on my notes here, I had to download these and watch them on a plane today. But the first thing here, he's using her to burn off his own anxious energy, like you were saying. There you go. And the, the squeezing on the shoulder starts during his uncomfortable silence. So it's a little like a, a stress ball. And he's more focused on getting it over with than, than getting a kid back. And when she's saying people were saying, we, you know, people are letting us know they're saying prayers. That's her saying other people believe us unconsciously. She hasn't planned this out. But I think that's her communicate. Other people are, you know, they're saying prayers because they believe us. There's a missing perpetrator. Uh, there's no request for help. And he's controlling her like a puppeteer in this. Uh, he's focused on planning and strategy. He's aimed at the ground, even responds with this stupid moronic quip back at the reporter. Like, well, if we knew we would have, we would have went there. What an idiot. I'm sorry, Mark, go ahead. No, fair play. Um, yeah, so I would go for, uh, she says, no, do you know where they might be? No, no, I don't. So 
the the elongation of of that uh, is a red flag for me. Uh, he retreats and gains height dominance as well. Yeah, partly because of the of the step, maybe, but he does prefer hanging out with the height dominance there. He does want to retreat 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 at this point. Uh, just again, uh, Captain Beasley, just fantastic. Do you, he says, do you want me to say anything else? And the guy is almost deadpan, other than to what Scott was saying earlier, which is there's some anger there from him. Uh, Beasley, I think, knows where this one's going. But again, great stoic attitude there, pinning him in. Uh, what interests me most about this is the grooming gestures that go on. So you'll see the female start to run her fingers down the the, the side there in a in a kind of a, a a scratch, almost sexual grooming gesture there. Again, she's appeasing, she's soothing him, she's appeasing. It only happens very quickly, and then I think she realizes that that's not what I should be doing right now. We're meant to be doing grief right now, not keeping my husband, keeping him happy, keeping him subdued, making sure he doesn't go off the rails, get angry right now. But I think we see that moment of what she's used to doing, which is keeping him relaxed, keeping him subdued, keeping him happy with these grooming gestures. And we see a grooming gesture for herself as well. So again, to, to chase his kind of earlier list that we put down right at the at the start, where's the focus here? The focus isn't on, can we make sure the child is okay? The focus is on, am I okay? Are you okay? Which, which we might see in many of these examples, a sense of, I want to look after the child and I want to comfort my partner at the same time. It's not that you can't in these situations have comforting of the partner. You can have both but they only have one at this point, and that's a real problem. Uh, that's what I got on that. Greg, what do you got? So I'm going to cover a few things. One is we talk about liar's loop, which says there is a trigger, then you fabricate, then you, you deconflict with your life, and then you pitch, and then you defend. Well, you can see her clearly standing in the headlights of the liar's loop. If she hasn't thought of these answers and she's trying to respond and she starts to dance around and she does that cover her face thing again where she's playing with her brow. The second one is he does a contracted denial. And you guys always hear us say non-contracted denial. It causes us to pay attention. This guy's word pattern is I, I, I don't, or what was his word exactly, where they ask him, do you know where it's at? No, I don't. And he did, I, no, I don't. So he did a contracted denial. It's probably because he doesn't say do not. And it's just how he's wired. So what we want you to hear is patterns. Patterns matter. This We know this guy did this. And he says, no, I, I, I don't. So that's his word pattern. The piece that's interesting for me as well here is this whole control thing that's going on. How much he, she start, he starts to move away from her. And then he grabs her and pulls her back over. If you've been around people who are in a drug-fueled relationship, I'm not saying she's druggy. He certainly looks it. And I'm not sure she isn't. They make me think of the movie Sid and Nancy, you know, mm. <laughs> that that kind of thing. Those volatile relationships get all kinds of nuanced things for relaxing. And we can't see all that from the outside. But I certainly see anxiety in her. Is the anxiety caused by she's not sure what he's going to do? Is it caused by the liar's loop? Is it caused by something else? But there's a moment of romance or looking you dead in the eyes and trying to convince you. And then there's a dance. If you take that video and play it very fast or very slow, you'll realize how weird all that body language is. He's looking for the door and then he moves and then she's looking for a different door and distancing. Then he grabs her and they pull back over. It's like two mimes in the park almost. If, you, if it were not such a horrible thing, you watch it that way, you'll be amused because it, it's an absolutely foolish looking dance. And that's the kind of thing that happens in relationships, especially volatile relationships, is that dance and that not being able to separate. Now, I don't know what he thinks he's accomplishing by doing that, by grabbing her and moving her. I think you're right. Chase is just his adapter and his way to release nervous energy. But it surely looks bad. And there's no way that I look at that and think, okay, they're both being honest. She's not anxious. She's not trying to get away. Again, if I saw 
that at a service station, I might think, hmm, what's going on? We're, we're going to do something on trafficking, on human trafficking. And this, if you see that kind of behavior and the people are not together, then you know it. I've, I've been in situations in my life where you happen on an abusive relationship. When I was a young guy and used to go to bars, guy in the parking lot slapping his woman around, as he's called her, and I went over to stop it. You know, It's that kind of behavior that I saw there. I saw, no, you're not moving and keeping control. Really weird I'm, I'm going to conjecture just like you guys do. This is there's something going on at home, and she's listening. It's because that's how they work. That's all I got, uh, Scott. Yeah, uh, right out of the gate on that one. We see when she's rubbing her face and bouncing around. Those those are all adapters for her trying to get rid of that. And like Greg, you pointed out to us. I don't think you point you. I don't think it came across on where we're talking here that you usually don't you know, touching your forehead. That right in there isn't something where you show sadness. It's where you show you're dealing with stress. I agree. I, don't, I can't remember if we had that, if we were doing that where you're off or, or not. I don't remember. Just to, in a, just to wrap it up quickly, she's, I think what we're seeing in her, uh, a myriad of emotions coming from her. No sadness, because I think she's sort of in shock that this has happened. I don't know how long after the, the, that he went missing that this has happened, that CJ went missing. But she's feeling, she's got fear, she's got shock, she's got a frustration, a lot of frustration when she when she looks at him a couple of times, and then she has to be nice to him and, and smile at him. I think she's a, she's a wreck, and I wouldn't be surprised if she's the one that said, "Look, here's what happened," you know, after taking his him in the room and going, "Look, you know, tell me what happened." She's she probably opened right up after that, and they probably understood that that she was the only reason she didn't say anything. Back to Chase's um, speech to her, what he, what the guy would say to her. She probably said that, you know, he said he'd kill me if, if I didn't do that. The other thing she's really afraid, and I agree with you, Greg, this is this is exactly the behavior you, you see when somebody's being controlled, you know. And Mark, talking about actors, I think the actor that could do this and hear me out, because it's it has nothing to do with looks, Brad Pitt could do this. Hand to God, I think, because he can look that uncomfortable. I've seen him do it in a couple of movies, and man, this guy is so uncomfortable. You can't, you can't fake that. But I think that's the I think I think Brad Pitt could do it. I think he could actually. Pitt is the is the king actor. of the of the wild wacky wacky water weasel. He there are a number of <laughs> characters that basically Cast. he's doing he's doing uh, wacky water weasel acting. You know how we're all the time. It's his method. Uh, it's his method. Exactly. You know how we're all the time quoting Joe Navarro. We say, "Well, Joe Navarro." Think, There'll be some kid that comes on and goes, well, Scott Rouse's wacky water weasel theory. So I'll be known as the right. wacky water, water right. weasel theory guy. In all this. Careful what you I'm going to teach, teach that at acting schools. Do you guys have any idea who is someone talking about taking him? No. No, I don't. I wish we did know. If we knew, he would have already went there. How's the rest of the family holding up? I know this is a tough it's, ordeal, but. It's been taking a toll on everybody. Everybody's saying prayers. Everybody's keeping an eye out for him. So. All right, well, let's throw it around the room. Let's take 30 <laughs> seconds and say what we think seconds. about what we've yeah, let's wrap it up and, and see what we what we think about all this. Mark, you want to go first? Yeah, sure. So uh, for me, what's most interesting about this is that control of the shoulders, control of the head area. It's it's not something you'd often see in a partnership that is um, that isn't all about control. So one to look out for, I think, as many people have said, but really clear examples of this controlling of the of the shoulder and controlling of the neck and the head. Uh, Chase, give us your thoughts. These kinds of people are obsessed with status, hierarchy and self image and how, how they're seen by other people. I'm willing to bet money. He's texting other women. They're going to probably find that on his phone. And he's doing that to, to improve his self image because he needs someone else to see him brand new on, on a regular basis. Scott, I'm sure you've seen those kinds of people maybe comment on it. 
Uh, he has zero mirror neurons. He doesn't echo any of her emotion. His discomfort comes from her touching her face, and he's worried that she's going to give it up the whole time. Uh, that's all I got, Greg. Yeah, first drug guy thing, right? Drug guys have that dual personality kind of thing. They have to share an image that somebody needs to see. I think he's trying to do that, and his image is not that polished. His best foot forward is not a great forward. So got that, number one. Number two, he's antsy as, as all hell. He's a nail biter and you can't, not that you know, lots of nail biters don't do this dancing thing he's doing, but energy's going somewhere. That's the reason people bite their nails. It gets to be a habit and, and it just chews it back. I think whether she knows exactly what happened or she was there or he came in and told her or whatever, she has suspicions. She certainly has some guilty knowledge of some kind in this. We can't tell exactly what, but we can see that she's hiding it and she's doing stress, not grief. The brain has, I learned, first thing I learned in body language, I always tell you guys, is if you put pressure on a person who's crying and they're really crying, it'll get worse. If they're using a part of their brain to call up and summon crying, it'll fade because the brain is not good at running multiple programs. We, we don't truly multitask, we simply flip between programs. And these are not, I, I don't, neither of these guys strike me as overly intelligent. I think they're so internally focused, they're unaware of how the world's going around them. And some of that is probably related to substance. I'll leave it at that. And Scott. Yeah, I agree. I think we're dealing with idiots, full on, full blown idiots, because I don't think they understand the gravity of what's happened. Obviously, I mean, she's really worried and she's she's got so many things to worry about. She understands that there that's bad. And he does, too, because I'm sure he's thinking, well, shoot, I might go to prison if this doesn't work and doesn't realize it didn't work from the time he walked out of there. From before we saw him, we know that Captain Beasley knows this guy's full of it. And he knows he knows that guy did whatever it is that they're going to find out. He had something to do with it. So I, this is just this is a. um like a big old jumble of emotions and feelings from frustration and and fear and sadness on her part to at nothing on this guy's part except worrying about himself. I agree, Greg. He's he's directly focused on him. Everything starts with I. He doesn't he doesn't open up with when they say where do you know where do you know what happened to the baby or whatever. He doesn't say no. We don't. He says I don't. I, and it starts off with I. He's just, this is just, it's ridiculous. Ridiculous. So I hope, I hope, I hope it uh, gets everything he's got coming to him. I hope it gets to him quick, especially when he gets in prison. So they don't like that in there at all, not even a little bit. They don't. All right. Yeah. Nope. All right. All right, fellas. That was a good one. Oh, if you like what we're doing, please subscribe and uh, hit the little bell. That way you'll know when you have something come out. All right, fellas. See you next time. Deal. Yeah. Bye now. With the Halo Panel. Hi there. Our YouTube analytics says there's a 60% chance that you aren't subscribed. So hit the subscribe button and the little bell so you get notified when a new episode comes out. Do it now. Perfect. I don't know why I said, I don't know, I don't know.